Death has fascinated human beings since the very beginning, and probably always will. Perhaps the most well-known story of death and resurrection is that of Jesus Christ. But you might be surprised to know the ancient world of mythology is full of stories of death and resurrection, far before Jesus Christ. So with Easter on its way, here are some of the most interesting ancient resurrection stories. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. According to the New Testament, Jesus Christ was crucified by the Romans around 33 CE. And after three days and three nights in the tomb, Jesus miraculously rose again. And ever since, Christians have been celebrating his resurrection every Easter. Scottish anthropologist James Fraser, however, explains in his book, The Golden Bow, Christianity isn't the only ancient faith to worship a deity who dies and then rises again. In the ancient Near East, where the Bible was written, stories of divine death and resurrection were closely tied with the agricultural cycle, and Fraser believed that early Christians likely chose a spring date for Easter to coincide with existing pagan festivals for the resurrected gods. Like Tammuz, the spring god of Mesopotamia, in ancient agrarian societies, the last days of winter mark the end of harsh days and the long-awaited bounty of the spring and summer. In ancient Mesopotamia, one of the first agrarian civilizations, the people turned to divine explanations for these annual cycles of feast and famine. Ishtar was the great mother goddess of Mesopotamia and the source of nature's fertility and abundance. Her lover was Tammuz, a handsome young god who died each winter and passed away to the shadowy underworld. For six months of the year, or in the winter season, Ishtar would travel to the realm of the dead to rescue her lover. During that time, the world was robbed of all fertility, reproduction, and growth. Every spring, the stern goddess of the underworld, Alatu, would allow the imprisoned couple to be sprinkled with the water of life and return to the world of the living bringing life and green vegetation back to the earth. In the Babylonian calendar, the resurrection was celebrated during the month of Tammuz, which fell in late June and early July. All across the ancient Near East, later cultures put their own twist on the spring resurrection story. The Greeks told the myth of Persephone, kidnapped by Hades, who was allowed to return every spring from the underworld, heralding the return of vegetation and grain production. And then there is Dionysus. Dionysus is the ancient Greek god of wine and divine madness. One of the many names attached to him is twice born. There are numbers of myths which could explain this, but one involves the death and rebirth of Dionysus. When Zeus made in some versions of the myth Semele or Persephone pregnant, his wife Hera fell into a jealous rage. She sent the Titans to tear the infant Dionysus apart. Then they consumed all of the corpse except the heart. This was saved and soon into Zeus's thigh, where he was gestated and born anew. Some attribute this myth of death and rebirth to viniculture. At the end of the grape season, vines are cut right back. They appear almost dead until finally springing back to life the next season. It would not be the last time in history wine was associated with the deity of resurrection. The Phrygians also told the tale of Attis. Attis was a Phrygian god who later entered the Greek and Roman pantheons as the partner of the goddess Sibylle. Like some of the other gods associated with death and resurrection, Attis was an agricultural deity. He was born from an almond nurtured in the body of a goddess. Attis was just about to be married to a princess when the goddess Sibylle showed up, throwing Attis into a frenzy. Maddened, he castrated himself and bled to death. Sibylle relented and brought Attis back to life, possibly resurrected in the form of a pine tree. Each year, the death of Attis was mourned as it led to the failure of plants to grow. Come spring, his resurrection was celebrated with the ritual dressing of a pine tree. And even in Norse mythology, there were stories of resurrection. Like Odin's sacrifice. Odin is the chief among the gods of Valhalla, a creator god whose wisdom and wizardry were unmatched. But Odin had to pay a terrible price to achieve this power and esoteric knowledge. According to Norse legend, 
the great sources of wisdom in the ancient world were the runes, magic symbols that not even the gods could decipher. But Odin was willing to do whatever was necessary, even face death itself, to untangle the meaning of the runes and access their hidden power. According to the epic Viking poem, Have a Mal, Odin subjected himself to a violent form of self-sacrifice, myself to my own self-given, Odin says. Odin hung himself from the great tree, Yggdrasil, pierced his side with a spear, and forbade any of the other gods from coming to his aid. For nine days, Odin hung from the tree, staring down into the watery depths of the well of Erd, until finally, on the ninth day, the forms of the runes were revealed to him. In the language and imagery of Havamal, part of Odin died in that nine-day ordeal, and he was reborn or resurrected as a far more powerful being with newfound knowledge and abilities. And then there is the Egyptian god, Osiris. Like Mesopotamia, ancient Egyptian civilization was dependent on the cycles of nature. They especially relied on the annual spring flooding of the Nile, which fueled the agricultural abundance of the Nile Basin. The ancient Egyptians believed that the orderly cycles of nature were controlled by Osiris, the god of agriculture. According to Egyptian mythology, Osiris once ruled the earth alongside his queen Isis, the fertility goddess. But Osiris was tricked and murdered by his brother Seth, who chopped up Osiris' body and scattered his remains across Egypt. Isis reassembled Osiris' body, anointed it with oil, and performed the elaborate rites of embalming, which resurrected Osiris to eternal life as the god of the underworld. Ancient pharaohs also hoped to become immortal through the same embalming and mummification rituals that Isis used to resurrect Osiris. In time, even common Egyptians chose to be mummified in the hopes of conquering death, just as Osiris had done. Royal mummies like Tutankhamun were found wearing funerary masks bearing the likeness of Osiris. Now, one of the lesser-known deities is that of Lemminkainen. In Finnish mythology, Lemminkainen is a hero who sets out on a mission to capture one of the black swans from the river of the underworld. He dies in the attempt and his body sinks into the waters and is lost. The body is broken on the rocks at the bottom and his remains are scattered. Lemminkainen's mother comes in search of him and gathers together all the body parts, sewing them together. This doesn't return her son to life, so she sends a bee to fetch some of the god's honey, which does the trick perfectly. And then, there are also many examples from ancient India. According to Hindu tradition, there was once a clever and beautiful princess named Savitri who refused to marry any of the suitors clamoring for her hand. She departed her palace in search of her true love and found Satyavan, a handsome woodsman who was once a prince. Savitri and Satyavan fell in love and married, but a messenger from the gods delivered a terrible prophecy. Satyavan would die in exactly one year. And as promised, on the young couple's first anniversary, Satyavan collapsed and died. Yamraj, the god of death, came to claim Satyavan's soul. But clever Savitri had a plan. She doggedly followed Yamraj across the burning desert and to the entrance of the underworld, begging for the return of Satyavan. Yamraj agreed to grant Savitri one last wish, but not for her husband's life. Instead, Savitri asked that she be granted the gift of many children. When Yamraj accepted, she asked him how she was supposed to bear children without a husband. And since she had vowed to only marry Satyavan, Yamraj had to return Savitri's husband to keep his word. Satyavan was brought back to life and the happy couple was reunited. And finally, coming to the Americas, Quetzalcoatl. In ancient Mesoamerica, the greatest of all gods was Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent worshipped across centuries of Mayan, Toltec, and Aztec civilizations. In some traditions, Quetzalcoatl was an Osiris-like figure, the god of agriculture and vegetation, closely associated with the rain god, Lalik. And like Osiris, Quetzalcoatl was deceived by his brother, tricked into drinking a powerful intoxicant and sleeping with the priestess. Overcome with guilt, Quetzalcoatl killed himself through self-immolation, but rose again to life. 
In Toltec mythology, Quetzalcoatl is linked with Venus, the brightest star in the ancient sky that appeared to rise from the sun, like Quetzalcoatl rising from his funeral pyre. In his personification of Venus, the morning and evening star, Quetzalcoatl became the god of death and rebirth. As creator god, Quetzalcoatl also descended to the underworld to collect the bones necessary to make the first human beings. So what do you think of these ancient resurrection stories? Comment down in the section below and see you again in another episode.